Good morning, afternoon, evening. Welcome to 50 Questions Friday for September 2nd of 2022. Holy smokes, it's September already. Um, so yeah, hopefully I'm sure everybody can hear okay. I'm just using my laptop um, on the road today. So anyway, um, let's see. First off, I guess we have, um, we're finishing up our tool of the week with the Wi-Fi ring, and that's going on through today here. So anyway, you can get your Wi-Fi rings for cheap. And speaking of good deals, holy smokes, thank you guys all for your support this last two weeks. Um, since our 50 Question Friday two weeks ago, um, man, we've had a lot of orders, a lot of just loving support from everybody and man really appreciate all of that that everybody brought um, pretty amazing really the amount of support that we had so anyway um, it's it's good to be here um, hey Valerie from Colorado hey I'm in Colorado today too heading down to the four corners here today and uh, Marsha from uh, from the East Coast, Southern Cali, Minnesota. Hey, Jen from North Dakota. Hey, Renard. Um, yeah, no, it was yeah, it was really cool that um, you know I was just reading the chat here. Uh, you know, like Renard mentioned, a few of his friends finally got tools. And, um, you know, it was really cool the amount of first time buyers that we had, which was really flipping fantastic. Um, so yeah, that was, that was super cool to, to have a lot of these people who I know have been looking at the website for quite some time or looking at the tools and, and they were finally able to jump in and get some. So, um, yeah, even though we sold stuff for below cost to us it was really super phenomenal to see the amount of tools going out um you know because that's really what this is all about for for us um hey nika have your new energy caller on fantastic um so anyway um yeah lots of gratitude for that and we have made it to the other side so over the course of the next couple of weeks just to let you know what's going on is that we're going to kind of start revisioning all the products that we have because we have like 80 products and we really need to simplify as well as simplify um a lot of things with the website um i know there's a lot of rabbit holes you can go down on the website so we want to make it so that the surface is easier to get into and to navigate through what you're looking for, but yet still offer all of the extensive um, stories and such descriptions and all of that. So anyway, um, yeah, so I would love to walk through a, um, a meditation here today for sure. Would love to get, um, little deeper into things so if you are uh looking um if you're if you're here live please do if you have questions drop them over here on the questions tab um i don't always keep up with the chat once we get going um but please do drop your questions there and if you are watching after the fact on youtube or on live storm here and you would like to join us live um just be sure to sign up for our uh, newsletter that will tell you when we have our 50 questions fridays so just check and chat here. Yeah, and please do jump on chat over here. We got some phenomenal beings that are always here um, holding space. And you know, when we get together, we we create this beautiful container, which is what we're gonna do right now. <sighs> so yeah, I was just kind of tuning into <laughs> the beautiful container that we have as this group of everybody who is here right now, as well as everybody who will ever watch these videos. We invite all of those in, um, into this safe, sacred space. So let's walk into the heart and we're going to see what happens. We're going to bring in, because today I want to 
um, help hold space while we have this beautiful container for us all to each bring in as much of us as we possibly can, each individually. So here we go. We're going to walk into the sacred space of the heart and we're going to start working. You're going to start working with your soul and bringing all of that in to be present here. So here we go. Closing your eyes if you wish, putting your attention to that physical heart. It's where we see your light, your soul's fire. Imagining the heart of the earth, deep within the earth, there's a crystal sun, the heart of the earth. We just invite in that light of the earth and just breathe it in up through our feet into every cell of our body and right into the heart, connecting heart to heart with the earth. Next, we're going to connect heart to heart with our highest aspect of ourselves. To me, I see it as this giant sun, a central sun in creation and the entire creation is also you. So connecting in to you as creator and breathing in that light, that support, connecting heart to heart with you as creator. Now in this third breath, in this Trinity breath, we're breathing in, bringing in that light of the earth that light of you, bringing it both together within you here and now. And it's not a doing, it's simply a softening and allowing of your light to come through all the layers. As you open up and allow the support of the earth, that light of the earth just starts to pull away all the denseness that no longer serves you. And as the light of you as creator comes in, it alchemizes. It alchemizes all the levels and layers. So just allowing your light to fully come in and to do what it does. because this is all here for you. It all happens for you and not to you, everything. So uh, thank you all for helping to hold that space. I'm just gonna jump into questions. Uh, Victoria, any thoughts on how to ease the drought and extreme heat that we're experiencing in the West and in Europe elsewhere using tensor tools? Could, should rain make, rainmakers be linked in a grid? How to incorporate harmonizers and other tools? Best phrasing for attentions around this. So, you know, my, my belief and understanding is, is that it is consciousness that affects weather. I mean, years ago, I saw a 12-year-old girl who could move clouds. Um, I've always known that we can affect the weather personally. And I just always had the battle with myself. Well, really, who am I to affect the weather and everything else? You know, all the small per, per human perspective things. Um, but, you know, there are some theories about how the weather is that it is just a reflection of human consciousness on the planet and how things are just, you know, crazy um that's you know that's one perspective that i've heard you know that i resonate with but truly um i feel that we can totally affect change with the weather now we do that not we do that from that sacred space of the heart by connecting with earth by connecting with creation source soul creator god you don't have to see creation as you um though I certainly do, um, and holding a space. So basically, when you do any of this higher consciousness energy work, um, lack of better words, 
um, when you do any of this type of consciousness work, it is about, you know, you as the human have the intention. So your soul knows what your intention is when you step into the space. And then for you, it is simply that softening, that allowing, that stepping aside and allowing your consciousness and light and that light of the earth to all flow out and affect the changes that you are desiring as the human. But we step out of the way so that it allows all the higher potentialities and not just the limited things that we have as a human. Because I know here um, in South Dakota, it's really dry too, usually. And uh, well, it's kind of dry everywhere, except for we have a nice little bubble around our area of greenness still, which is kind of unheard of for this time of year. Well, yes, I did put that rainmaker out and I did step into it and just said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to allow this to happen. Um, anyway, I stepped in and just softened and, you know, did what we just, what I just talked about here is that stepping in and holding that space for whatever it is in the highest and best to occur. And to me, the Rainmaker is simply a device for, it does hold the space and it does magnetize water. Um, but like all the tensor tools, they are so much more powerful when you apply your consciousness to them. So as far as working, so back to you, so <laughs> to finalize your question here, Victoria, and about what to do for, for the drought and the weather, is always when you step in here, we got to step into the heart space so that we're not in fear and in disempowerment and everything else because look, it's so dry, so hot, you know, and, and coming from that space, I guess, is really what I'm trying to say with this story is, is that we got to come from that space of allowing. That is where the true empowerment comes for us to affect change. Um, in our entire reality and that of mass consciousness. So just simply allowing your light to go in and do the work to me is the most powerful thing that you can do to affect the weather. Um, but yeah, the Rainmakers, fantastic. Um, as far as gridding the Rainmakers, what I suggest is using one of the quantum grid points. Putting a quantum grid point onto the Rainmaker is going to basically bring that energetic of that rainmaker throughout that entire grid system, you know, it, in the highest and best. It's, it, it just, um, especially with your, you know, your intention. And I always call this soft intention because it is something that, you know, again, you have the intention as a human, you go into the heart space, and then the soft intention occurs, which is just basically your soul knows your intention, but you're not holding on to it and limiting it and boxing it and everything else. It's a soft intention of allowing um, because your soul knows what your intention is. So um, using the quantum grid points is a fantastic way to add to that to help grid this out. Um, so... Hopefully, the, hopefully that kind of answers the question there, Victoria. Um, Diane, I received two prototype heavy gauge wire small size bangles that look identical to the two healing hands heavy gauge rings. Are they the same energetically? How are they different? Oh, gotcha. Yes. So actually, those um, the prototype ones that you have are actually one gauge smaller than the healing hands ones, um, and those prototypes. Um, they are a little bit different from the healing hands ones. The healing hands are basically that heavier gauge ring. Um, they are one that is holding that same new energy, which is just basically, gosh, that's what we're going to clear up is we have things listed as new energy because when we created the, the wisdom tools, basically we, we were still expanding on those wisdom tools. And then I had, we had like a little line of new energy tools, which basically are the wisdom. It, it's all the same now. The new energy and the wisdom are all the same thing right now. But the healing hands does carry a little bit something mm, more to that in that it is basically there's all of all these beings that are helping to hold space for your 
create. So for your star, your connection to that highest aspect that I know of, of the soul, which is you as creator in within its own universe of creation. Um, so that highest aspect of the soul that I know of at the moment um, is what those healing hands are helping to bring in more fully. Um, and eventually that's going to go into all of the wisdom tools, you know, um, but right now the healing hands are, are a thing in their own in that you can create that third field with them. And you only need one ring to create that third field. And you just imagine or hold up any other ring and you hold them together. And basically you're creating another field inside of them, which is great to imagine putting a person inside of that field or bringing it over something like a knee or something like that, that you're working with or over a person in the physical right in front of you, because then it brings their soul star in. Um, so it is a little bit different than those heavier gauge bangle prototypes. Uh, Jackie, how do I use the wisdom mini wand keychain? This is my first wisdom tool. Um, so the, all of the wisdom wand tools, whether it is the, the silver wisdom wands, the full size, the, the mini um, with the clasp on it, or the um, wisdom wand pendants, all work in the same in that you can, you know, actively use them to run energy with. Um, in, in to run energy, I just mean to simply make small circles or figure eights. And basically that is how, that's how I, teach to run energy with these tools is just making small circles to me that's how i can feel the energy if i just simply sit here and point it at my palm i can feel it yes but it's almost like maybe it's just a ceremony for me or an intention that when i make the small circles that i'm actually running the energy because then i totally feel it and feel it pulsing um, so that's one way you can do it but really there's um There is a meditation from December 3rd of 2021 that we did with the water wisdom rings in the zero point of the soul. Really, that is where I see the wisdom wands really holding the space. And if you want to get in and bring in you into your core, and from there, when you look at something, you are using your divine awareness. And when you put divine awareness onto a situation, whether it is physical, mental, emotional, life situations, aches, pains, whatever it is, when you put your divine awareness onto that and allow it to be and allow it to no longer be in the same breath and the same stroke, you are basically recognize something you're not fighting it you're allowing it to be in existence like a pain in the shoulder i allow it to be in existence but at the same time i allow it to no longer be in existence and so basically that's what the wisdom wants to me are the most potent and profound with is that that space that they help you hold and so again if you go back to that meditation december 3rd of 2021 um pretty amazing space and that is basically to me how you use the wisdom wand and then once you go through there and do that then you just kind of make it your own so that way you have the wand and it just serves as a reminder a tool for your attention um, to that space for your divine awareness to come in and do the work that way so um yeah jackie that's true what i would suggest is go check out that 50 questions friday and do that meditation and if you go on YouTube um, and you look at it up on YouTube, uh, Amber goes through all of our YouTube's uh, 50 Questions Fridays and time stamps them so you can easily find those meditations. Hey, Renard, you received the Healing Hands rings and got another vibrational heart attack. <laughs> I've rubber banded them around my feet and hands while sleeping. Wow. <sighs> Holy smokes. And notice my dreams seem to take me to childhood settings. What are the ways you've worked with them? Oh man, that just, that feels flipping amazing. 
it almost feels like you're going through and changing and shifting everything, you know, because all time is, everything is so malleable with consciousness. Everything is malleable with consciousness. And so it feels like you're, you know, you're doing some cool things. Um, so how I worked with them, oh man, I hate to admit it, but I have not really worked with healing hands very much at all. Um, I've been, I carry them in my back pockets. So I got one in each back pocket that I've been walking around with for the longest time. Um, but you know, usually when I'm, usually when I do the work, it's, you know, I do it usually without the tools. And if I get into a bad space, tough situation, I'll use the tools to help me get into a better space so then I can just do the work. But, um, as far as working with those healing hands, I mean, I've, I played around with them, um, quite a bit you know, just when we first made them and such, just to kind of get an idea for what the energies are with them. But um, I guess I really haven't worked with them that much. Um, yeah, and I'm not sure why that is. It just, well, besides just haven't really had the time. But anyway, so man, Bernard, I really like the way that you use them there by putting them around the while sleeping um yeah so so that's you know so we always really appreciate the feedback um you know you guys on on our testimonials or you know if you go to i think you usually get an email from one of our online store apps too after you buy a product after a couple of weeks to give a testimonial so you know gonna share and sharing the things that you guys experience or that you do with the rings um whether you have an experience or not, um, just kind of sharing the ways that you use them is, is really fantastic and really what the testimonials are about so that other people can look through and, and receive that information and ideas, um, you know, on those rings. So we do, we do appreciate when you share those things. But yeah, sorry, I couldn't give you <laughs> anything with that one, Bernard. Uh, let's see, Alfredo, can you do an energy read for the current energies? I've been having extreme clarity with many realizations about the way I've been living as well as the connections with others on an even deeper level that is more truthful. You know, as far as like the, the current energies and what we've seen in the past, you know, two and a half, three weeks. Um, and it's been about two and a half weeks that I've noticed a, that I've been talking about how I shifted so profoundly right before, you know, the, we had our whole IRS thing here. Um, I had my huge shift. And as Brenda said, man, if I, if I hadn't, I, uh, you know, I, I would handle things a lot differently. Um, but it's, it's, there's been some profound shifts in the past two and a half weeks, about two and a half weeks ago that I've heard from a lot of people. And I, and I, Holy crap. Yeah. I really feel September is, you know, September has always been a pretty phenomenal month for different shifts happening. Um, you know, September just seems like there's a lot of things to always happen in September. Um, really profound, big shifts. And so, you know, we're all, we're all in this kind of that individual uh, shifting, you know, we're, we're all, we're all doing this alone, but yet still in the collective. Yeah. Well, so, so now I'm just kind of making up words. I'm not even to say, I have no idea what the energies are right now besides, um, phenomenal. You know, there's, there's a lot moving and shaking on the planet, but the more that we can stay in tune with ourselves, the more we can help to, um, harmonize everything else that's going on is there a way to tell whether our silver rings are sterling or fine silver they were purchased at various times so let's see the only rings that we um that we've moved from sterling to fine silver um you know is our two inch water rings um other well no that's not true either 
the only thing that we changed with those two inch water rings is we moved from a sterling silver solder to a solid silver solder. And that was about a year and a half ago, I think that we did that. But otherwise, um, the, the description of each product will, should say whether they are sterling silver or solid silver. And, um, and that's just the way they are. So we haven't changed up, um, you know, we haven't made a product in sterling then switched to silver or vice versa. So whatever, whatever the description says now for that particular product still applies to whenever you first purchased it. Um, yeah, cause I was trying to think we've changed any of the silver products and no, nope, it was just the weld on the two inch ring was all. Oh, let's see, crystals that, Jackie, crystals that hang out inside a ring, do they still imprint outside energies and need to be cleared and cleansed? Right now I have the crystals in a jar with a fire right around it and a betar coil, one jar for each chakra under the massage table. So, you know, when you have, um, when you put a crystal inside of a tensor ring, it never needs cleaned or cleared. So basically um, the tensor rings are always clearing that surface um, because a crystal contains, there's like, you know, you can look at it as layers. There's the surface layers that, that pick up outside influences and that you can program a crystal. And you know, if you're just speaking into it, programming it, you're usually programming it on those surface layers. There are some people that can actually connect in with the heart of the crystal and get those programs to stick internally. It's like a co, it's a co-creation with the consciousness of the crystal to ask that consciousness to carry those programs deeper. And when they are deeper, then it is the consciousness of the crystal that chooses to hold on to those specific uh, programs and tensions in that crystal. So usually a tensor ring will not remove those deeper programs or intentions unless the crystal deems it in the highest and best good to release. Um, so, yeah, yeah well, I'm, we'll save stories, but using the wisdom ring. Um, so if you use a wisdom ring with the crystals, it is so phenomenal because it is bringing in, it changes the crystals. It brings in that highest aspect of the crystal the highest aspect of the consciousness of the crystal then embodies into the physical kind of like the, what the wisdom rings help for the human to do and plants and water man with the wisdom drink went rings do for water of helping the water fully embody itself. Um, so crystals, it's, it's phenomenal how the wisdom rings work with the crystals, but any tensor field, no matter what tensor field, that's a working tensor field, um, will clear that outside layer of crystals and keep them clear, especially if you have them within, um, within that tensor ring itself, they'll always stay clean and clear. Um, and then two, uh, and I love that you have, um, you know, and you're using the Vedar coil, which is beautiful. The Vedar coils are uh, from KRT, Kelly Research Technologies, um, the guy who builds radionics at Kelly, um, and he's taking over his father, father's business and doing this, but he makes these little discs that are just like energy pumps. And, and they're fun because you add them to the tensor rings and it just, it just creates a flow pretty cool but anyway um gosh I lost the question here uh, but anyway i think it's phenomenal how you have that set up where you have a jar of crystals and a ring and that little badar coil under there because then when somebody sits down there that ring is creating that column of light so basically all of that frequencies properties consciousness of the crystal can come up through and work with the person who is laying there so I think that's a phenomenal setup you have, but yes, they'll never need cleaned or cleared. Uh, JR, I tried the healing hands on my water jug and it seemed to make it super dense compared to the water alchemy ring. What are the effect of the healing hands in water? Oh, you know, that's interesting. And I don't know what that is. Cause yeah, basically when you use like the water alchemy rings, to me, the water just, it gets, bright and vibrant 
um, because it's bringing in that consciousness of the water. Um, I'm almost thinking that that it's almost bringing in more of your light, maybe. Hmm. I don't know what that is, Jr. I'm gonna totally have to try that with my water this weekend. As a matter of fact, you guys, thank you. I'm gonna break out my healing hands rings and I'm gonna start playing with them this weekend while I'm out here gallivanting. So, um, yeah, thanks for bringing that up. And thanks for that question, Jr. because um, I am curious too, but yeah, I do feel that. And yeah, it, it's almost like it's you that settle into the water or something. I don't know, I'll have to, I'll have to look at that more, so. All right, Mika, on the pyramids, can you use different Gaia spheres like the new energy one instead of the original and other Taurus like divine I am and still create the pyramid space? So yes, with our Ascension pyramids, you can use any of the Tauruses, any Taurus at all with the Ascension pyramid is going to be perfect. Um, and yeah, the gold and the fire will work too because you'll have an alchemist ring set there. So that will... That'll work too. Um, and as far as the Gaia spheres, um, yeah, the the regeneration, new energy, and the upcoming wisdom all will work perfectly for the pyramids. Um, the regeneration and, and anything past that in chronological that we've created. Um, so the new energy ones would be perfect. We will have shoot i don't have it in my room i have it down on my bike but um i we we will have that uh guy we talked about two weeks ago it's it's about a five and a half inch it's in the new energy and we're going to release that here this next this coming week uh, we just had to get caught up here this last week before we could release that one uh, you know so that we can actually make some more so anyway we'll have um another five and a half inch Gaia sphere that's coming out that would be perfect for either the the largest pyramid or the smallest it will it will you know, sizes in between those two generation spheres that come with the pyramids. Um, so yeah, that, yeah, any of those would totally work for the pyramid. Um, let's see. Uh, Nika, when wearing or carrying the tools, many create a good sized field around us. With what is going on, do we need to consciously clear our food and water or are they automatically brought into the highest and best for us? So that's gonna depend upon your individual, whether you are automatically clearing your food or not. I know again, a couple of weeks ago, I talked about how my daughter and I would eat popcorn at a movie and it just hurts. But when I go in and I use the wisdom wand to clear it, we could eat it and we were fine. Then the one day I was just like, oh, you know what? I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to consciously do it. I'm just going to intend that it does it. And then the popcorn hurt, you know? So um, it used to be that I would always run energy into my food and my water. And then when we created the, when the harmony cubit, uh, the STU came along and we created the harmony coil, which was about, you know, this looked like a harmony coil. Um, then when I first started wearing this, because this creates that toroidal field around you that connects into the heart, all of those things that I used to do, like run energy into my water, things like that became automatic. So that happened with my water and my food. But now we're working in much higher fields. And, and to me, um, even though we have all of these tools for me personally, I still need to bring my awareness to the food or to the water. And it don't, it doesn't have to be ceremony, but it has to, for me, it has to be enough of a ceremony, which is simply my awareness and my intention. And then it's done. I totally believe that if we, you know, I still feel like there's certain structures of belief or programs, which I choose to release, that we're not allowing me to, like with the instance of the popcorn, to just simply be, okay, you know, just allow it to be clean and clear without my awareness on it. 
I really feel, so that's why I'm saying this is an individual thing and it depends on mm, the mind, whether you can allow it or not, you know, well, that's very simplified. Um, programs, beliefs, everything else that, so that's why ceremony. Ceremony is there to, to help with the mind. And so I guess what I'm saying with this clearing, even though you're wearing all these tools, maybe you have your Merkaba field going and in your Merkaba, you have all those things programmed. And that was kind of the first thing that came up when you asked the question was to, and for me, it remembers to me is that I feel like I almost need to go back through and reprogram these things into my Merkaba field, because as we keep shifting and changing, and that's it is that all this old stuff just falls away. So, so that's it to me too. So I was talking about how the harmony coil helped me put that into my field. I feel like that field is no longer, it's no longer here. So it's almost like as you keep shifting and changing, you need to step back in and reiterate or put it back into your fields, your intentions. Um, so I guess long story to answer the question, which I know it always is, but um, it's going to be individual, but I really feel that if you can allow it and do it with this little ceremony, because that's, that's it is the more, the more ceremony we use, the more we're in our mind and the more limiting everything is when we can step aside more without the ceremony, without as many limits and boxes, magic happens. So, yeah, I would say make the choice, make the intention, and it is. Audrey, can we use the Wi-Fi rings on a refrigerator? I feel like it's the biggest disruptor of my small open concept apartment where I can't shut it out or any other tools. Um, yes, so let's see. The best place to place a Wi-Fi ring on your refrigerator. Um, you know, I keep feeling it's right down there on, um, hmm, I feel it's like down there on that condenser pump or someplace down in that area on the back of the fridge where your electrical cord goes in. There's usually a panel right there that has screws in it. Well, I don't know what all the new fridges are like. Um, so I was seeing that, that, you know, that's where I was seeing was the best place to just tape it on to right in the back where you find all of those electrical components. Yeah, because I was thinking you could just put it up there where you have your dial at, but I still think pull your refrigerator out and uh, just look on the back where the cord comes in. Uh, it's usually down there low, usually, you know, down towards the bottom of the fridge and maybe feel for where you, where the vibrations are coming from just in that, that area where all of the electronics and that condenser pump and all that. So when you, uh, when your fridge kicks on, you know, it makes that little hum right down in there. So basically when you put a ring, um, you know, when it's creating, sorry, do I have a ring? Yeah, I have one. Uh, here's a ring. Um, basically it's creating this column of light that comes out of it. So if you have whatever your electronic device is, your mouse, so let's say this is that refrigerator pump. As long as this is like a flashlight, it shines straight out. So as long as that light is shining to where it is connecting into this field, then it connects into that whole thing. That's where I feel would be the best for using a Wi-Fi ring. Um, you know, I like to I like to put like you know like a 22 inch Golden Fire or or 23 inch new energy ring, something like that on top of my refrigerator. Um, because then I can put, you know, my supplements and everything, crystals and all that right on top. And then that just comes down and permeates through the food, a nice shower of, of energy throughout everything. But um, just using a simple Wi-Fi ring. And if you're finding that that fridge disrupts, that's what I would say is taping it on the outside of the fridge, on the back, wherever you find that electronics. Let's see, JR, I bought the nine and a half, eight and a half, and seven and a half inch rings. Can I make the rainmaker with these and the four tensile coils? Yes, you can. I actually I love using the the alchemist 
rings for for doing this the water rings just fit easier and they're less expensive so that's why we made the the, the rainmaker plate with the water rings well and plus you know yeah but yeah just you can use any of the trios that are in the any of the trios actually so you can even use the harmonic creation field trio our, our older precursor set of three rings um because the original rainmaker was actually used in the very original set of three rings the spurling 144 the 177 and the 188 that was the original three rings that slim showed us to make the rainmaker with and then we had the harmonic creation field trio and now we have the alchemist trio which, by the way, the Alchemist Trio is uh, is our new tool of the week, and I have a coupon code for you for that already. So if you'd like to get in the Alchemist Trio, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But yes, so JR, you can totally use that trio of rings to in the four tensor coils to create that Rainmaker. Because um, basically, when you put it together, so the Rainmaker has its own etheric template. When you put it together, when you're placing those three rings and those four coils, you are bringing in and anchoring in that a very higher dimensional counterpart to that tool, which is the Rainmaker. Um, you don't have to do any ceremony. It just happens because your soul knows your intention. Uh, Mecca, also on the pyramids, the mini in particular, can you use a Rainmaker underneath of it? <sighs> that feels good. And since it has the alchemist rings, will they and work as the alchemist set to create the pyramid of energy if you have the other tools. Is that free read? I got too lost in having a rainmaker under a pyramid. That feels good. <laughs> okay. So on the mini ascension pyramid with a rainmaker. Oh, I get you. So you're asking if um, if you can use that rainmaker. So it has the, the 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 alchemist rings on it. In lieu of having the three rings that sit on top of the pyramid, the ascension pyramid. Yes, you can totally take those three rings off of your ascension pyramid if you have the rainmaker under there, because all it really needs is that set of three rings. Um, and they don't have to be sitting on top of the pyramid concentrically like they are. They can be underneath or in a Rainmaker plate. So as long as all the tools, those particular five particular tools, are with that 60 degree pyramid cut to the sacred measures, you're going to have the Ascension Pyramid. Uh, JR, if I wear the healing hands on each wrist and do any healing work, do they still have the same power as when they are aligned to create a column? Yes. So, you know, you don't have to create that third field with those rings. Um, those rings are more about, you know, when, when, when Brenda, Brenda and I did the first, you know, sit down and ask questions and she channels through answers, um, you know, from, from our guides and her soul and, and all that. Um, we were seeing that you don't necessarily need you do you don't need to create that third field and work with it that way. Again, it, it that's almost kind of like a it's almost like a ceremony, because in reality you don't even need those rings at all um, to to bring in that soul star. Let's just call it. Um, but when you put rings on your hands. And you're running energy, you know, whether you're doing Reiki or you're just running energy from your heart out your hands. Yes, it amplifies it. It brings through, especially if you have the intention that you're bringing through that soul star. To me, that is, that's flipping powerful. So you're not only just running your energy from your heart. And maybe you are intending to open Reiki and use Reiki too, and it's just another supportive field. Um, as would be the um, any of the rings that you'd wear on your wrist. They're just bringing in that supportive field, especially if that is your intention and your attention is there when you're doing it. You have that soft intention. Hey, I'm going to bring through um, the healing hands energy. And so then you're doing that. And basically... To me, when you would do that with the healing hands rings, you know, I wish I could fit them over my wrist, but I hold them in my hands and bring them out. Basically, um, 
that's what you know really you're just holding space for that person's soul star to come more fully in for their soul to come more fully into the present and so using those healing hands with reiki to me would be fantastic because basically you're inviting their soul in so you know and i had the i was like holy crap with the understanding of what these healing hands are doing um I guess I never really saw it in this way, but when you work with another person and you're going soul to soul, basically your soul is there, their soul is there, and your soul is holding space, showing other potentials and possibilities. You know, that's what space holding is, is showing other higher potentials and possibilities from, from you as the master, having your awareness into a specific reality, you know, um, kind of, weird life situation. That's my reality. And you're focused your in attention onto there. It's like when you hold space, you are holding um, a space of other higher potentials and possibilities for you to unfocus the master you to unfocus from this particular reality situation and to allow that to go away to dissolve and others to be created. It is that simple. Everything is so flipping malleable, you guys. It really is in the face of consciousness. Um, sorry, let me answer the question. Um, oh, that wasn't even a question. I was just going off on a tangent. <laughs> All right, so I better get going because we have a lot of questions here. Um, what happens if I put two generators, one inside the other, divine I am inside the golden fire? Good question. I know a lot of people are doing that, um, you know, and when you do use the, the two energies together, um, you know, let's say you have a golden fire generator and that divine I am together, it is then it's co-creating a field. So it is bringing the energies of both of those out and usually something new because that's it too, is when you start to play with the tools, we encourage you to play with the tools. You can do no harm. And you intuitively do this to create something greater than the sum of the two. So I can't say specifically what that does, but man, keep doing it. Um, whatever you are drawn to do with the tools, that's how the very first activator, which was an ancient Atlantean tool, came into being, was because all of these people had these pieces of the tools. Everybody was putting them together that, to look like the activator. And everybody was on that same wavelength, the remembrance of that specific combination to create that energy. Um, Nika, with the new energy caller, I get a very visceral, icy hot sensation that ebbs and flows and shifts around my body and head. It settles for a bit and moves on. Do you have any idea what that feeling might be? Um, your soul. You know, um, with with the wisdom and new energy, it is bringing in your soul um, so much more. And when you feel things moving, if you feel things moving in your body, it's all energetic. So usually like ache and pain, if you have an ache in your left ankle or something and you run energy to it, and all of a sudden it moved up to your right knee, you know, you just keep chasing it around until it's cleared, dissolved, um, alchemized. And so, um, to me, you know, it's just, it's just your energy doing, you know, your, your consciousness coming in your soul and doing the work. So it's really cool though, that you can sense and feel, you know, that as it's taking place. And it's always so hard to say what exactly it is because it's usually, um, on so many levels that it's happening. Uh, JR, you mentioned the healing hands have the wisdom new energy. Is this the same effect as the actual wisdom ring? Um, so, yeah, you know, the only difference between the healing hands and, and, and a wisdom ring is just this little extra field of, of space being held of all of these beings. You know, um, some of them were dragons, some of them were, um, you know, the like talk, um, you know, the plasma being with wings. Some of them were of the, you know, the angelics. Um, 
But anyway, they're all outside of the bubble. They're just holding space. They're not in here working. They're just holding space. So that's what I see the healing hands doing is basically it's, it's bringing in more beings to witness and to hold space. And then within this bubble and within this space is where your soul star comes in, that highest aspect, well, that higher aspect of of another aspect of you as a soul is this star or the central sun in creation that is all your creation and i'm just going to simply call it your soul star um because we don't you know gosh the soul the more you learn about this stuff it's like wow eh, the soul is so much beyond description and understanding but anyway it just brings in that part and that's the difference between the wisdom wands and the healing hands and of course eventually you know i'm sure intending that it just becomes a part of all the wisdom tools don't know right at the moment though what's where it's going uh christine i just received my great healing hands and love them i've been using them one in each hand with a tensor coil tucked behind each one which i think was guided to it seems to feel different, but not for sure if my imagination. Yeah, totally play with the tools the way you are intuitively guided to play with them. And you can do no harm. And when you're working with the tools, trust your intuition. Trust you. Um, it's, you can't go wrong. And, and playing is great. Uh, Jackie, uh, one what pendants do you wear daily oh my goodness i love my tensor coil pendant and, you know it's just the new one and when i fully integrate it i probably won't wear it anymore and i love my taurus my alchemist taurus and my silver wisdom wand i always have a wisdom wand with me whether i have the full size in my pocket or a mini one clasped somewhere but this, yeah, this is what I wear, have been wearing daily. Um, and I really love the silver. You know, this, I just resonate a lot with these energetics. And of course, today I'm wearing my Divine I Am Activator Pendant, which I've kind of, kind of shifted the energies a little bit to, you know, to, to not be such a Activator Pendant. I'm just wearing it more for bling today than I am for the energetics. Two, can I use my wisdom wand to upgrade my golden fire rings or is it better to replace them? You know, if you have, um, if you have those golden fire rings and you can certainly sit with, um, with those wisdom tools and shift the energetics of any of your older tools, it's kind of the same concept of working with water or with crystals, um, or anything in that you can you can shift them you can hold the space so you know when we first found out about this it was uh, one of the gals from one of the past presidents of the Dowsing Association was using one of Slim's rings one of the Slim Sperling's original rings and she had one of our wisdom rings in her hand and she brought them both together and she shifted Slim's ring she totally shifted the energetics of it because a lot of a lot of us are just don't you know as much resonate to a simple 144 megahertz ring because it's you know it's cool and all and it's great for many people but uh, i don't need i don't need like you know it but you can shift it so yes um totally take your wisdom wand go into the heart space bring the tools that you want to align more with you. And so when you're shifting them, that's what I would, you know, that would be kind of my soft intention or my wording would be to bring them more into alignment with me here and now. That's what I did with my divine I am activator pendant because it was a little rough for me because I did not need that energy still, man, I wore this one every day for, you know, a year or for over a year this was my pendant um but it just wasn't what i really needed anymore and so um i just ask that it come into more alignment with me and what i need here and now and when you're in those fields it happens 
Uh, let's see. Quan Li, what can I do with the tools or meditation to expand my consciousness? I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. I'm terrible with names. To expand my consciousness so that I can be more of our source creation consciousness. So what you can do with the tools is, so the tools are great space holders. They help to, to get you into a space to where you can further connect. What I would suggest, again, still one of my absolute all-time favorites is the space that we held on the December 3rd, 50 Questions Friday that you can find on YouTube, December 3rd, 2021, the 50 Questions Friday, and you go to that, um, um, that zero point of the soul. We did that water alchemist um, meditation in the zero point of the soul. To me, that is one of the most profound ways to start to invite in more of your consciousness. Because once you get into that space of divine awareness and you start to alchemize all experience, it comes in as wisdom, light, consciousness, soul. And then you can't go back from there. You just don't lose it all of a sudden. You might not be allowing it in at times. And that's been one of my realizations the past couple of weeks too, is I've always been chasing this, you know, God, integrate that master self, you know, because we're all masters here. There is an aspect of us that is a master. That's why we are all here. And, you know, and Samson and I were having a conversation here last night too, my wonderful water friend here in Colorado um, about how it's like we kept trying to just embody that master that we are but really it's it's more about just you know going into meditation or going into that space into the heart space and and connecting and allowing more of you your soul to just keep coming in and the more you do that exercise it's it's like the it's like the less distance there is between you and your consciousness. But when you do this um, zero point meditation, the zero point of the soul, it, it's basically um, allowing you to start to alchemize all of that stuff. So everything that is your experience, the veil. So it's almost to me, it's almost like I see it as like almost like the veils is what stands between us and that master self and or the soul. Um, and so the more that you are alchemizing everything, your experiences, your traumas, and everything, and you bring in more light, that to me is, is, is totally the answer to that question, is to amass consciousness, to do the work of the alchemizing of everything that has been your creation in the old paradigm. Alchemizing the entire old paradigm in all of your creation so that you can step into new creation. That's huge. And that's what we're doing, you guys. Uh, let's see. Denise, will the rainmaker help with too much rain? Any tools for hurricane protection? So yes, um, and we have had that question about the rainmaker. So you know, some people are concerned. Well, it's really wet here. Can I use the rainmaker to to help with the weather? Still, yes. So basically, the rainmaker brings through love. It is it is that love that comes through that is basically shifting the weather into you know nasty storms. We're not inviting in all these damaging storms and weather and, oh, we want rain here. I'll give you rain. No, we are connecting in through a field of love, which then brings in the highest and best potentials of that. So, yes, if you live in a hurricane area or the weather or where the weather is just torrential, yes, then that rainmaker can certainly help to level all that out, to shift that from from that damaging weather pattern. Um, so yes, it, it's, it's, you know, kind of like a weather harmonizer, I guess is probably what we should call it. Um, Andrea, uh, how does the energy change in the SITS pyramid having one set of alchemist rings or having two alchemist ring sets? So 
Um, anytime that you add more rings to anything, it just increases the potency, let's say, how you perceive the field, I guess is what I would call the potency. Kind of like when we have a thicker gauge ring versus a thinner gauge ring. They both carry the same energetics, but the thicker gauge ring, you can usually feel it more on the physical. It's more potent. And so as you start to stack more rings um, on top of each other, you are just increasing that, that potency of the field, how you feel and perceive it. And so adding more rings to an alchemist pure to the um, ascension pyramids is just going to bring in a little bit more of a tangible feel to it but the energetics is going to be the same um marcia do you plan to produce any more rainmakers they sold out quickly <clears throat> yes most definitely we uh we ran out of resin fast and then we were having an issue with getting resin and prices changing and all that good jazz. So we just, and when they were going so fast, we had to stop because we didn't know for sure about getting the resin and the pricing and all that. So now that we're finally taking a minute to breathe, um, we actually are taking today off. We have a three day holiday here in the U S um, for labor day on Monday. And all of us here at the studio have just been working hard the past two weeks straight. Um, you know, most of us worked last weekend shipping packages. And um, so we said, nope, we, we need to take some time. And so we're all taking four days off, um, including today. And when we come back next week, we're going to sit down and reevaluate everything. We'll bring the rainmakers back because we now have resin that's coming in so we can finish up all of our, we, I think we only have like 17 open orders now um, that are left that some of them require the resin um, to complete. So yes, rainmakers will be coming back. Uh, Jackie, any tools with the chalice energy than the, than the HECA class? Actually, all of the tools have the chalice energy in them now. When the chalice came in, it permeated all of our etheric templates. The chalice energy has permeated the entire planet and the entire universe. So <clears throat> to access that chalice energy it is simply just an intention when you pick up any of our tools. It doesn't matter when they were made or what frequency they are. Any of our tools contain the chalice energy and you can simply ask that it be brought out of that ring. The chalice is amazing. The chalice is what, uh, yeah, the chalice is amazing. Um, are you aware of any breweries using your tools? Um, gosh, we did have one brewery and I don't even remember where the heck it was at. I remember somebody told me, um, I gifted them a ring and then I guess they, they, they end up owned a brewery and was you and started using the rings and I don't even remember because that was a few years ago um, so yeah I'm not sure oh my goodness did we really get through all the questions oh my goodness yay um, I'm just gonna jump over here to the chat really quick to see what's happening okay um, so we were talking about um, let's see the Wi-Fi ring we're, we're a tool of the week we're just clearing that we're we're ending that one. Um, the new tool of the week, the, coming up here this next week, you guys, is the Alchemist set. Holy smokes. I tell you what, my all-time favorite are rings are the Alchemist rings. That is the Chalice, the Divine I Am, and the Harmonizer ring together. Those three rings together make the wisdom field. Now, to me, I still prefer using the three rings versus just using just a simple Alchemist set. For the fact that, um, uh, you know, again, you, you start to add more rings together. One, you get a more of a potent field. But but using the alchemist rings as, as the alchemist set is fun to pull apart. And then you can have just that chalice energy, or you can work with the divine I am, or you can work with that harmonizer ring. Um, and so to me, it offers a more of a variety of ways and energies uh, to use those specific rings as the alchemist set. Love the alchemist sets. And two, the alchemist sets are in that heavier gauge ring. 
Now, this particular one right here that I wear on my wrist, this one is the Divine I Am. This is the smallest of that personal alchemist set. And then they then they they nest inside of each other. So we have the Divine I Am, which fits on my wrist. Then we have the Chalice and the Harmonizer ring. Um, I love these sets of rings. So anyway, the Alchemist sets are what are coming up as our tool of the week. And that will also include our pendant size or what we call the pocket alchemist set um, and the ones that are in silver. And, you know, those pocket sets are what we make the alchemist pendant, the alchemist pendant. We, we permanently attach the three together uh, with a little bail that we create. But just getting those set of three of the pocket rings is still one of the most phenomenal pendants and space holders. Um, you know, I have actually considered going back to wearing, you know, my, my alchemist rings as my daily wear, you know, after I'm done integrating and playing with this one, um, I'll probably end up going back to my alchemist pendant because it's just a great space holder. But anyway, working with those alchemist rings, um, it's fun and fantastic to play with the different three energies and then bring the three together and feeling that fourth energy field of the wisdom. So anyway, Alchemist Rings, um, if you would like to get a jump on this, uh, the code, the coupon code for the Alchemist Rings is AR for Alchemist Ring. So AR. Now we're only doing this as the set of three because, um, you know, well the, well, the tool of the week, we're just doing the alchemist set. You know, we may do the chalice rings or something as a tool of the week another time. But right now, the 16% the off, and again, 16% off is pretty freaking fantastic for the tools. Um, because, again, we don't do a huge markup. So 16% off of your alchemist sets, you can use the coupon code AR uh, during checkout. So anyway, the alchemist rings. Fantastic tools. Uh, let's see. Anything else? Oh yes. Uh, so if you if you got the um, the do it yourself Taurus is another one of those that is in those alchemist rings uh, because we have a divine I am as as uh, the first ring that you work with, and then you work with the chalice petals, and then you work with that harmonizer outer ring to create your own Taurus. And I forgot my Taurus out, out, outside, so um, I was going to show you a, an assembled Taurus of that do-it-yourself Taurus. And again, if you are waiting for that video, I appreciate your patience, but we'll do a video next week. Um, I'm hoping that we'll basically walk you through a meditation and how to assemble that alchemist Taurus. Um, and so basically you do the meditation working with the divine I am the soul and then you have the petals which are in that chalice energy which hold a beautiful pattern space um, and then you bring it all into the physical with that outer harmonizer ring um, so I guess that was the other thing that I want to mention is that we are I am working on getting that out here next week hopefully so anyway off oh, was just mentioning to put rings inside your headphones. Yeah, so the Wi-Fi ring is a fantastic ring to put inside of over-the-ear headphones. Uh, so everybody's just talking about here about listening to Tom Kenyon. Um, but you listen to anything because, uh, you know, as one of the social media posts here recently is, is, is a reminder about a 30, 333 ring that we produced um, nine years ago that changes the color of sound. And so now then that propensity is in and that possibility is in all the tools. So basically the Wi-Fi ring can change the color of sound as well. Um, it changes sound. So basically just putting those Wi-Fi rings inside of headphones is a fantastic way to listen to music. Um, and try to stay away from binaural beats on YouTube if you can. Oh, did I say that out loud? All right, you guys. Um, much love to you all. Thank you again for your support of being here. And um, I guess uh, I was talking about the meditation I wanna do and that was really, I think what we did there in the beginning was so absolutely appropriate for the meditation because that's really what I wanted to do was to get everybody to just 
be able to start bringing that light in more. Because as you bring in your soul star, you become an alchemist. That's what we are doing is we're not going to go out and change the world by fighting the darkness or, or supporting the light with a picket sign or whatever. We are here to shine our true light, our soul light. Um, it's different than light and dark light. And we are then alchemists. So going back to the meditation that we did, we did here at the beginning, when you bring in your light, you are truly an alchemist. So anyway, love you guys. Thank you for being here. And we will see you next week.